Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the various concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding the latest login in 2022, 2020, and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. Okay, so let's jump right in. We are given a table called logins with two different columns, user ID and timestamp. And these are the data type of each of these columns. The combined value of user ID and timestamp is the primary key for this table. And each row contains information about the logging time for the user with their user ID. We are asked to write a SQL query to report the latest login for all users in the year 2020. Do not include the users who did not log in in 2020. So basically in the year 2020, for each of the users, what was their latest time or the last time they logged in? The order of the result does not matter. Okay, let's go through this example, right? So this is the data that has been given for both of these columns. And if we look at it, we are to, uh, we are to basically return for each of the user IDs, what is the latest time the person logged in, right? So for example, in, 20, in the year 2020, so for let's say user ID is six, right? So these two rows are for year 2019 and 2021. So obviously these two should not be included. So the user ID is six only logged once in 2020. So this is going to be the latest login time for user ID six. For user ID eight, there are two times, but once it was on 1st of February, 2020, and the other one was 30th of December, 2020. Obviously the latest time would be in December, right? So for user ID eight, it should be this one. For user ID two, only 2020, so this one. And for user ID 14, uh, since there is no login time for 2020, so user ID 14 won't be included because it is mentioned, do not include the users who did not log in in 2020. So the final output should have user ID six, eight and two with the with their respective latest timestamps, right? And this is what we have and the order of the result does not matter. Okay, so let's start building this query. The first thing that we should do is only include those rows where the year in the timestamp is 2020, right? Because we are only to include that in our output. So from this table called logins, we are only to keep certain rows. So where the year value of the timestamp column should be equal to 2020. Okay. And now what we need to return in the final output, the user ID and their timestamps, which should be aliased as last stamp. Okay. So let's go through this, right? So basically, uh, what will this do, right? So let me just uh, show you what is basically happening here, right? So let me just copy it here and paste it here. Okay, so once we do, so this is the entire login table. And once we do uh, that, we need to only keep certain rows where the year of the timestamp column should be 2020. So basically anywhere where the timestamp does not have year 2020, it would be removed, right? So for user ID six, these two rows would be removed, right? So this is gone. For user ID eight, it is going to be present. For user ID two, this row is going to go away, right? So this is gone. For user ID 14, so since there is no timestamp where the year is 2020, so both of these rows will go away, won't be included, right? So if you, if you see, by doing this, we are taking care of this line, right? Do not include the users who did not log in in 2020. So we are on the right track. Now, how do we get to know the latest login, right? So here we can use window functions and which window function, which we, we can use the first value by partitioning. So let me just show you, right? So you return since our output should have user id and their latest timestamp so return user id and now we need to get the latest timestamp so what we can do is 
for each of the user IDs, we can create partitions and then arrange in a decreasing order of timestamp and take the first value, right? So basically what I'm saying is, so let's say, let's, let's go word by word, right? So first I said, let's create partitions by user ID, right? So all the same user IDs will be in same partition. So user ID six, so there is no six. So there will be a partition created here. So to represent a partition, I'm just including a blank line here, right? So this is one partition. User ID is eight will be in one partition. So this in these two rows will be in one partition. And since there's only one row for user ID two, so this will be the third partition. Now, what I'm saying is after creating partitions of user ID, we can order the timestamp in decreasing order, right? So basically, the latest one should be the first row, right? So since user ID six has only one row, so this is going to be the latest one. Similarly for user ID two as well. But for user ID eight, when we try to, you know, uh, get the latest value, so we need to order it in decreasing order, right? So what it should have happened, like once we order it, basically the partition will look like this right um this because now the latest one goes on the top and anything else will go after that right so now once we so first thing we did was created a partition second thing we ordered on timestamp in a decreasing order and then we are going to take the first value so when we take the first value obviously for this partition the only thing that will remain is this one since uh, for user ID six and two, there was only one row. So both of these will uh, remain as it is. And that is what you will see, right? So if, if I remove this after taking the first value, so if you see, this is the exact same thing, right? Six, eight, two, these are the exact same output. So you see, so what did we do first? Firstly, we did partition by user id then what did we do did we do then after creating a partitions we order by timestamp in decreasing order and since we are writing a window function we always know that window functions all these partitions and orders are written in a clause called over so this will be inside an over clause so over right and then once we create a partitions order on timestamp in decreasing order what do we do we take the first value of which column timestamp column right so first value of time stamp column right and since the alias of the this this column should be last stamp what we do is we alias it as last stamp okay so there is one small thing that needs to be done here otherwise it is not going to give us the correct result okay let me show you right so let me just still again copy paste this entire thing and try to explain what is the small thing that we need to do and why we need to do so again from this table logins we keep only where 2020 was the year column so these two rows are gone right so these two rows are gone um, and similarly these all these three are gone as well right so now once what do we do from logins uh, where year of timestamp is equal to 2020 we get this and then for each of the user id so for six eight and two we are what will we do we are creating partitions based on user ids uh, ordering the timestamp and decreasing order and getting the first value right so if we do this actually what is going to happen is for user id 6 we are going to get this for user id 2 we are going to get this for user id 8 since we are ordering in a decreasing order so we are going to this value but the problem is since there are two rows in it it is going to give us two rows so basically a third 
column will be added since we alias it at last stamp right last stamp and it is going to have for six it is going to have this for uh, this one right for user id 8 so this is the last stamp so this is going to happen right so this is going to happen and but we don't want that, right? So let me just, yeah. So this, we do not need this. We need that for ease of the user ID, we need only one row to know what was their last uh, login, right? So what we can do here is instead of doing this, what we can do is we can insert a call, a keyword called distinct. So now it will only take the distinct combinations of user ID and their and the last stamp, right? So six and this is a distinct value, eight and this, eight and this. Basically, it is a duplicate value, so it will only keep one of these, and then two and last stamp, right? So now it will work, right? And now it will be giving us the correct result. Okay, so let's me go ahead and run this to see if it works. Okay, so you see uh, this, our code has been accepted, our output is same as expected output, let me submit it and see if it passes all the test cases or not. So yeah, this passes all the test cases. And yeah, so this is how we solve this problem. This question looks very easy, but you need to keep in mind certain things and especially about this distinct thing. So Again, that is why I start building a query right from the from uh, statement and then we build step by step so that we don't get, you know, confused because if you and even I suggest that if you come and read such uh, queries written by someone else, start from the from clause because if you really start from the select clause, right? So you are not going to have that much of, you know, a perspective into what is being going on. So this is how you can, you know, read these SQL queries as well. So, okay, so from a table, we kept only certain things, then there, there would have been, you know, uh, we are returning some user IDs and the first values after partitioning by user IDs and ordering in a descending order, eliciting as, as stamp. And then since we do not need repetitions, we all, we are going to add distinct. So yeah, this is how we solve this problem. Let me know guys if you found this video useful and until then I will see you guys in the next video.